If you want to succeed, you need a brand. What is a brand anyway? The term is synonymous with confusion for most of us. In truth, it is difficult to define because our business doesn't come with a map. There are countless roads that you can take, and any one of them can be right or wrong. The system in a box can be helpful, but it can be hard to shoehorn your own brand into someone else's strategy. Your brand starts with you. Hi, I'm Frank, and today is Thriving Writers Thursday. First, we need a better definition. Look up brand in the dictionary and here's what you'll find. A type of product manufactured by a particular company under a particular name. An identifying mark burned on livestock or, especially formerly, criminals or slaves with a branding iron. A piece of burning or smoldering wood. None of that sounds like it has anything to do with writing. It has nothing to do with the art, but it has everything to do with the business. If you want to be a thriving writer, your brand is as important as your art. What's in a name? We're all given names by our parents when we're born. I had my first experience being identified as a number when I went to college. There are tens of thousands of us roaming the campus. The only thing we all had to identify us as unique individuals was our social security numbers. I chafed at this because it was so impersonal. My friends didn't call me by my government-issued set of digits. Your address book isn't alphabetized by the street. Our names mean something to us, and it's what people think of when they think of us. Names are more than identification. They are our reputation. When we become popular with a massive audience, we can become a household name. And if you're really popular, you can be known by your first name. Think Roseanne, Cher, Bono, Sting, Madonna. In fact, IMDB has a list of 77 stars that are known by one name. Names mean everything to celebrities. They're not just identifiers. They're marketing tools. Many celebrities change their names to make them more appealing to the people they want to reach. Writers create pen names if their birth names don't lend credibility to what they do. When you're starting off, you have the opportunity to link your name to whatever you want. But choose carefully. Once you start regular associations, you become the character you create. When this happens to actors, we say they're typecast. Many actors say that playing one role too long ruins their chances of finding other work. Of course, this is only true if they believe it is. And when they do, their audience will too. Being typecast isn't a bad thing. We expect Jim Carrey to be the zany goofball in most of his movies. Morgan Freeman is the wise old man in many of his films. Tom Cruise is more often than not the cocky hero. When you know who you are, you know what your brand is. We use something called personas to define our audience. Persona is a fancy word for profiling. Some of the things we're told to include are age, gender, location, careers, hobbies, and family. Those are good, but they're not the whole story. 
Demographics are like a fence you build around your yard. When you have friends over for dinner, chances are they're a lot like you. They're in your age range. They have the same number of kids as you. They like the same food. They have a lot of the same interests. That's why they're your friends, right? Your demographics are coincidental. It's the story you tell yourself and how it aligns with your friends' stories that draws you together. You think the same things are unjust and that something should be done about it. Your ideas about your role in the culture tell the same story. You'd love to raise your status and make a difference, but if you can't, at least you want to protect what you have. These beliefs are called psychographics. It's what similar people believe, regardless of who they are and where they live. For writers, it can be the freedom to express yourself as you please, the power to use the platforms at your disposal to bring change, or even the right to make money from your art. Psychographics are like a light that attracts people to your home. Your audience has a set of beliefs and dreams. If you want to make an impact with them, offer hope that makes those dreams come true. Be open to interaction with them. Assume what you will, but hearing how it goes on the ground will inform your work like nothing else will. Then, you can tailor your offerings to meet their deepest wants and needs. Take good care of your name. When you want a friend, you have to invest time in that person. That means you call her regularly. You check in to see how she's doing. You ask her about her dreams for the future and cheer her on. And if she's heading the wrong direction, you help her get back on track. When you show up regularly, people remember you. We've been at our church for about five years or so. We do whatever we can to participate, but sometimes our schedules get in the way. I've had to start saying no so much here recently, I thought people would forget me. I had lunch recently with my pastor, and we talked about my business, my family, and other things. I told him I wasn't thrilled to have to step out of my office there, but I felt I had no choice. He assured me that our presence was noticed and appreciated. It's easy to tell if you're having an impact when people tell you that you are. For writers, this can come through comments, shares, and business proposals. When those things don't come, you feel like you're whispering at a rock concert. The best way to get the attention you want is to give it away. Comment on other writers' posts. Share their work on your platforms. Collaborate with them to make a difference to a bigger audience. When you lift others, you lift yourself. Here's a golden nugget to take away. Your brand matters. It's the name you make for yourself. It's the story you tell to others. And it's the fire you build to draw others in and warm them to your message. Here's something that you can do. What's your brand? Can you share it in a single sentence or a paragraph? When you can boil down your brand to its most important elements, you can sell it to anyone in a two-story elevator ride. Share your brand story in the comments. If you need help, stay tuned next week for more about how to create a compelling mission. If you have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching, and I hope you thrive. Thank <laughs> you.